Hello and welcome to the Art Teach podcast. Today I'm here with Patricia Ramsden. Hello, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. For the listeners, can you tell us a little bit about your background and where you studied? Yes, well, I uh, was born in Lancashire and uh, through and through, I suppose. Um, After working and bringing up a family, I was given the opportunity to study art professionally. This came about because I studied uh, for a short while in London uh, to become an interior decorator and had my own business for 12 years. I finished working as a sole trader, various reasons for that, and I had to find employment. From there I went to work in a school and do some voluntary work and just became absolutely hooked on education. It was in the primary sector. So I went to night school and started doing one or two art courses, never thinking that I would be good enough to go on to do a degree. I have two sons, both studied art, one studied painting and the other studied sculpture. Both are in teaching now and in my view are good at what they do, but unfortunately are unable to have a career as an artist family commitment. So I went along to the University of Central Lancashire and took a portfolio with me thinking they're not going to want this woman to come along on our course. However, they accepted me, which I was quite shocked. So I started at uh, the University of Central Lancashire. It was 1999, which is, is, is not that long ago. And from day one, I was just absolutely hooked on what I was doing. What I liked about the University of Central Lancashire was the fact that for someone like me, who didn't sort of slot into any particular medium, I wasn't a painter, I wasn't a sculptor, I wasn't whatever. I was just allowed to think about things and to use the ideas that came to me to make art. Fortunately, at the University of Central Lancashire, I was allowed to go all over the campus working in different areas. At one time I was doing work and I was in forensic science, so that was interesting. Then I went into maternity and so on and so forth. And the best place that um, I liked was working in the engineering department. And for one of my assignments, I actually made a floor out of engineering bits and pieces. So that was the start of using different materials and the process. And that's what I love. What inspires you? What inspires me is I'm inspired very much by looking at other artists. And the, my favourite artist is Louise Bourgeois, who is a French-American artist and sculptor. And she's best known for a large spider sculpture. I love her work and the fact that she was still making art well into her 80s and died at the age of 99. So I was very inspired by her. What I liked about her work is she's an abstract artist with suggestions of the human figure and expresses emotions. And I like the the fact that she uses unusual materials, such as metal. And and for a woman artist of her era, I think that was quite special. Whilst I was at university, I tried different types of materials and just found that the way I work, it's all about process. And it's the process and the documentation seems to be more important to me than the actual end result. When I get the end result, I'm happy with it, but it's the journey to the end result that inspires me more than anything. So would you describe yourself as an experimental artist? Um, I think I I would, actually. I did find that the sort of work I did at uni, when I went on to do a master's degree at Leeds, you have more opportunity to make large-scale work installations, that kind of thing. When you're on your own, you come out of that, you haven't got the space, you haven't got anything where you can actually make this type of work. I suppose in London it's it's different, but in Lancashire, I think you have to fit with what you have. You work with Art Teach, and you're one of the artists in the Turin exhibition, The King of the Cats. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what your involvement is? Well, The King of the Cats, I was involved with Art Teach for quite a few number of years. I met my aunt when uh, we both did a residency in a lovely school in Trawden. And I always remember the first day I met my aunt, who obviously her medium is sculpture. And she said to me, but what, what kind of artist are you? And I found that very difficult to explain to someone who knows exactly where she is and where she's coming from. 
and trying to explain to my on the sort of work I did, it, it must have been very difficult because it's all to do with ideas and process. This is how I got involved with Art Teach. I was working for a creative partnership and my aunt asked me to join the group to see if somehow we could all work together and um, that, that, that's how I was involved in them. What are you doing for the Kingdom of the Cats? What kind of work are we expected to see at the exhibition? Right, well, for the King of the Cat, uh, I wanted to make... Uh, well, I looked at the stories, and first of all, I have to be honest, I wasn't inspired. Say I was born in Lancashire many years ago, never heard of any of these stories whatsoever. So that was interesting for me, because I, ha I needed to find something to hook on to. And looking at the stories, everyone seemed to be excited about the fact that they could paint birds, make birds, make this, make that, make the other. And I was thinking, what can I make? Because I'm very contemporary. So by looking back and going back to the way I work, which is to look at the historical aspect of it, it would make me think, which way can I work with this? And I've always wanted to make some figurative work, but never actually gone down that road. And I wanted to, um, I've looked at some Victorian dolls, which I have a collection of Victorian dolls, and I was quite inspired by the ceramic head and the cloth bodies. I thought, well, I won't make birds and I won't make animals, I will make the characters. So that's how I started. And as I was moving along working with the ceramics, I decided that I would make oh, the white doe and I would make the cow, just for something completely different to what I would normally do, which was very challenging. But with Julie's help, I managed to get there in the end. From there, looking at all the issues that had gone on and things happening and challenges facing me, I couldn't make any of the bodies how I was going to make the bodies. Because once I was able to pick up the heads, I found that physics came into this and these heads were far too heavy to fit onto what I wanted to do. So I had to completely go back to the drawing board and think, how can I make these into what I'm looking for in, in a completely different way? So basically, I've gone into thinking right back to when I was doing my degree and thought, well, what, what is going to hold this head up? And the answer to that was metal. And so I tried making the cap out of mesh and thinking, yeah, this is the way forward. So I've gone from doing something that was what I would class as soft sculpture into hard sculpture now. You will be seeing some hard steel bodies with ceramic heads and they will be in outfits quite contemporary, futuristic, I would like to describe them. So what have you learned through the pre-exhibition process? The challenges during this pre-exhibition process. I think the fact that the whole process has completely um, thrown me in many ways because it's so different to how I would normally work. As I say, I work in a very methodical way, planning and preparation. And obviously, if I'm not working like that, which I haven't been, it throws you because it's not only are you going down the road of looking at subject matter that you've never worked with before, using materials that you've never worked with before, different pressures of working in a different environment with people that work in a completely different way. The, you know, the social media, the technologies of, of, of another thing that have been very challenging to me. What is your favourite story of the King of the Cats? Well, my favourite story has to be Lady Sybil and the Milk White Doe. Reading the stories, I have to be honest, as I said it before, I didn't really find anything of interest in the stories to start with. And so how on earth am I going to pluck something out of here that makes me feel as passionate about what's in those stories as what Jackie Harris finds and my aunt to a certain extent. And it really concerned me that I couldn't latch on to something that made me interested. And I found that the only way to do it was to read the book over and over and over again. And it's amazing when you are actually reading these stories how... Something else happened part way through, which sort of the stories then begin to speak to me. And the first one was Lady Sybil and the Milk White Doe. Well, the Lady Sybil, I mean, obviously she lives in this beautiful house uh, near Hampton, which is very near to Rossendale. Lord William, 
she had many suitors, but Lord William was the, uh, the, the suitor that wanted to marry her. And she didn't want to marry anyone. She was more interested in the, the moors and the, the brown birds and all the, um, the other wildlife there. And she wanted to be a witch. And I suppose really that, that was quite good because we, we all know the Pendle witches and it all seemed to fit in quite nicely with that. And she used to go over to the moors and Lord William was determined that he was going to marry her. He thought he might go and see someone, an old lady who was known as a witch, and he told her what he wanted to do, what he intended to do, and she said, well, would you like some help? And the answer was yes, he would like some help. So basically what happened was she told him to go to the moors and he would see a milk-white doe. When you see the milk-white doe, you must throw a silk around her neck and lead her back to your home, which he did. And basically what the story is about is that he captures Lady Sybil, who has actually put a spell on herself and turned into the milk-white doe, which I found quite interesting. And I think it's really, it's, it's very much a love story. And I suppose you can look at it as not being a something fictional. You can think about it in sort of everyday life, really, because that's the sort of thing, I suppose, that's happened to people. Because I do, I do like this happy ever after ending. And she was happy. She was happy to marry him in the end. Stories connect to people and they tell, a, you know, they tell a tale and they help guide you through life. And I think it's yeah. really nice. I mean, it's kind of leading to my last question. Why do you think it's important to retell these stories? Well, I think it is important to retell these stories because, as I say, I haven't heard any of these stories. And I think for you know, future generations, it, it's really good to keep our culture and history alive and uh, to pass things on from one generation to another. Uh, I was speaking to someone today about Boggart and this person who was Lancashire born said, what's the Boggart? And I explained what a boggart was, or what I know to be a, a, bog, a boggart, what has been written about boggart. And she said, oh, I can quite understand that. Yes, I think I have heard the word before. And so, really, I think it's keeping things alive is so important, mm -hmm. and especially part of the local community, because I find that very often working in schools today, children are not really aware of, of what's gone on in the past. And... Um, I think it's, it's good for them to think, well, you know, we do have a community, a local community here, and uh, it's good for them to talk to, to, to grandparents about that. And it is nice to bring all the generations together, and I think the Kin of the Cats exhibition is doing exactly that. It's an, it's an exhibition where granddad can go with grandchild, you know, families can go, and you have people taking what they want from it, which I think is really nice. People can actually look at it in a different light and think, well, this is the future. The artwork is showing the future and it's up to you to look at it and make your own stories or pass those stories on. And so it's, it's really all about that. It's all about passing the stories on. That's part of the artwork. Well, thank you so much and look forward to seeing the exhibition, The Kin of the Cats, Berry Art Museum and Touring Around Lancashire. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. If you'd like to know more about The Kin of the Cats, go to www.thekinofthecats.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening.